Have you ever wondered why anyone would give up time, money, and energy to get involved in the political process? In this episode, we talk with Cindy Redburn, a candidate for state representative in Missouri. She shares with us some of the reasons why anyone would run for public office and explains what impassions her to try to make a difference. Welcome to Homefront on Missouri Grassroots Radio. I'm Cynthia Davis, your host. As a writer, speaker, and former legislator, we discuss limiting government, fiscal responsibility, and fair taxation. I'm a mother of seven and a wife of one for over three decades, so I bring you my personal experience. And now it's time for Homefront with Cynthia Davis. Tell us, how is your race going and where are you running? Well, I'm running for state representative in the 96th district, which is located in the South County area. The only opponent I have is an incumbent Republican who has nobody challenging him in the primary. And so we're just both waiting for the primary to finish so that we can move on to the general election. There is no Democrat opponent, no one filed in the Democratic Party to challenge the Republican incumbent. What's wrong with those Democrats? You know, I've asked myself that question quite a few times trying to think this through. And how is it that uh, we can have so many uncontested races in our state? What's going on here? What's behind this? A week before filing closed, I asked the Secretary of State's office to send me a printout of all the races that had people who had filed for, you know, all the different positions that were open for this year. And so I I received that the next day. As I started tallying up, I was astounded that in the, what is it, 163 seats in the House, Mm -hmm. 97 were uncontested races one week prior to the closing date uh, for filing. And then in in the Senate, with 34 seats, 17 were uncontested. Now, I know that those numbers changed the final count on that, which I'm going to do sometime in the near future here, because I'm curious. I know it seemed as if the last election cycle, there was still a large number of seats that were uncontested. And that was Democrat and Republican both. It seems as though the Republican seat seems to actually be leading here as the number of uncontested seats. I'm really puzzled. Do you have any insight on that, Cynthia? There was an election held in several other states just a few weeks ago, and 100% of the incumbents won. I heard that that has never happened in America yet before like that. Since when do you have 100% of the incumbents winning? I mean, it just shows that the voters are less educated than ever before, and the people don't care enough to fight it. They're not brave enough to get out there and say, I'm not going to let this thing go to the trash. I will stand for my principles. I don't care what you're doing. We are better than this. We are Americans. We fought the war for independence from Britain so we could have this. Yes, yes, absolutely. There is voter apathy, but at the same time, I'm questioning why there are two major parties concerning challenging the other party. Why is that happening? Because it it has gotten too expensive. It's like we all went to an auction and everybody started bidding on the product and suddenly we realized that they're bidding way out of our price range. And sometimes the best thing you can do in those moments is put your hand down and don't let your spouse scratch his nose. Right. (laughs) Well, you know, and and I understand the expense of running the campaign, but we're talking here state representative campaigns. 
which don't necessarily have to be very, very expensive to put a lot of money into them. So I, I don't know. I'm just glad to be in the race, and I guess I'll puzzle over this this lack of interest from the Democratic Party. So it puts me as the only opponent of a sitting Republican representative in that area. It's interesting. You mentioned this 100% of the incumbents won. We question the apathy, but yet at the same time, it seems as if there is a large number are very dissatisfied and are starting to express that in elections. An interesting thing happened in the local election in the South County area here in the uh, April election. We had a mayor who's been the mayor for quite some time and a write-in candidate who started a write-in campaign two weeks prior to the election ended up defeating this sitting mayor. I think everybody was absolutely astounded by the results of that race. That's sending me a message that people are dissatisfied, people are frustrated. And this gentleman apparently ran a campaign on, well, he just didn't see the way that they were doing things was the right way to do it. He just got out and two weeks time managed to find enough supporters to elect him to the position of mayor in this community. So I found that to be interesting. And, you know, as you said, there's probably the disinterest is still there. The apathy is still there. But at the same time, I sense that the many Americans are extremely frustrated. And that's why we as Constitution Party people do have to be involved in this process. We have to be able to go out and meet these people. You know what? We don't believe in governing the way that you have been watching and observing for years, government that basically rewards special interest instead of government that is of the people, by the people, and for the people, and where a government rules by law, not by the whims of men. So that's our job to get out there and get this information before voters who are dissatisfied, who are frustrated, and who are willing to somewhat let's throw all the bones out hopefully others who maybe are just becoming awakened to the idea that liberty and freedom is worth fighting for to join me in my campaign. I hope they will. We are all doing what we can. And if nothing else, at the end of the day, we have to live with our own conscience. We know that people are watching, God's watching, and the end result is up to how not just how we do numerically, it's up to really, did we fight? People in Germany, I mean, you think of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He did everything he could, and it still didn't end good in his lifetime. But because he fought, who can guess how many other lives may have been saved? Because he did put up some opposition. Because he did say, I'm not going to go down without a fight. And what have we become as Americans? I mean, do you ever look at us and say, is this us? <laughs> are we are we becoming unrecognizable? Has our apathy gone to such a level that nobody cares anymore? I love the fact that you said people are getting tired of the same old. I just want to see them actually engage. I think that can happen in our lifetime, but it's still real hard to see people who will Stand up and be counted. And if anybody ever wants to be true to their conscience, I encourage you to contact Cindy Redburn. Cindy, do you have a website or a contact information you want people to know about? They can contact me at my home, which is 314-200-9282. I really want to bring information that will actually cause people to want to be involved. I want to present to them a candidate who is not the same old, same old, who is actually a person who really cares about the rule of law, who will not govern according to whatever special interest groups can help her campaign along, who will actually put out right in front of the voters from the very beginning, this is the way that I will legislate. You won't have to put your finger up in the air and find out which way the wind is blowing when an issue comes up. You will know in advance 
my positions and my stands and my philosophy of governing, and you won't have to worry whether you're going to have to deluge my office with calls to, quote, change my mind to do the right thing. I will be doing the right thing from the start. And I hope that's something that will attract voters to my campaign and be willing to go in and just vote for something different for a change, something that is really different, not just a bunch of uh, cliche campaign slogans, but someone who really honestly does believe that freedom is worth fighting for. And in the end, as you said, it really doesn't matter, Cynthia, whether I win. It matters that I did the right thing. Important in, in, for me is that I'm doing the right thing. And uh, when we all begin to look at ourselves and our conscience and, and look to the future and look to the world that we're leaving our children and our grandchildren, we cannot sit back and just pretend like we can't, you know, that this isn't happening. We have to be engaged and we have to take that message of engagement to those that we are our friends, our neighbors, our, our community that this is something worth fighting for. I think in the heart of most Americans, there is that spirit of Americanism that's been somewhat dulled for some time. We've been kind of lulled to sleep by letting others do our job. That can't continue, and I think people are beginning to realize if something is going to be done, it has to be me who steps up to the plate and puts the effort into it. So anyway, that's where I am tonight. Voting should never be a matter of convenience. It should always be a civic duty that is designated to one day. You know, but once again, that was a uh, compromise by our Republican majority to uh, get something they wanted from the Democrats. What did they get? It was the voter ID, and uh, so I think that's where we compromised. Now, I, I could be wrong on that. I don't want to say unequivocally that's what it is, but I think that was compromise. They said, we'll give you, you this and you give us that. I, it stinks to high heaven. I would say that's like one of the bird doll trades. <laughs> they said, yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and that's one of the things that I want to make clear is that I'm not going to be involved in those types of compromises. We do what's right. It's time we have people sitting in our elected officials' positions, legislating according to the rule of law and according to good, biblical, sound principles of government and not compromising this with that, get that, and whoever shoves the most money underneath the table. That's just not the way that our government was designed, and we've got to get back to that type of thinking. And I think Americans are ready for that type of thinking. Hi, friends. Do you like what you're hearing? Then go to my website. It's CynthiaDavis.net and sign up for my newsletter. You'll get all this information and more when you sign up for my email reminding you of when you'll hear another podcast and letting you know what's coming up next. Besides, we always have a little bit of humor at the end. So go to CynthiaDavis.net and stay in the loop. For those of you who don't like email, go to my Facebook page. It's called Homefront with Cynthia Davis. And make sure you click the like button. That way, you'll have a convenient way to see what we're doing and to get the word when another podcast is released. Shine, let it shine before men. Let's That's Homefront with Cynthia Davis on Facebook. Lord. My website is CynthiaDavis.net. That's where we keep all our good stuff. So if you want to get our newsletter and find more podcasts, go to CynthiaDavis.net. Hey, let's stay in touch. So, Cindy, what's the difference between you and a libertarian? Libertarians and constitutional thinking people are probably in agreement on the fact that we do believe in a limited role of government. But 
That's probably one of the very few places that we are in agreement. You will find libertarians who are pro-life, but a great majority of them are not. They believe a woman has the right to do with her body as she pleases. One way we part company would be on the border situation. Most libertarians would believe that borders should be non-existent and that people should be able to freely go from one country to another wherever they want. So we would disagree on, on the issues of borders and probably on a lot of what you would consider moral and right issues. I do believe that communities should establish good morality. I believe there are certain things that are they're called vices because that's what they are. I think our laws should protect our communities from immorality and things that are harmful to communities. Can I get your take on one more ballot issue that the Republicans put on the ballot? It's the question of should we raise our sales tax three quarters of a cent? A lot of people think, oh, it's just three quarters of a penny. How much can that hurt? And a lot of people think, well, it's being done to fix our roads up and you know, we need good roads. Everybody agrees that roads are important. So I, as a retailer, am shocked and appalled that anybody who claims to be a Republican would put a tax increase on the ballot. They're presuming that a lot of low information voters will come out. And worse than that, all it takes to pass is to blitz the TVs with all these ads for why it's so good. and People aren't, the taxpayers don't have the money to balance the debate. So what's your take on that sales tax? Well, my take on the sales tax would be we need to cut spending to find the money to pay for the road improvements that we need. We don't need to increase taxes. The money's there. I have no doubt that we can cut many, many places where money is being wasted where fraud is involved, and we can come up with more than enough funds to take care of our roads. So I'm opposed to any type of a sales tax increase. Well, spending. It's just like you and I, Cynthia. You know what? They, if we have only so much money in our checkbook, we don't go out and spend more than what we have. We figure out how to live within our means and how to use the funds that we have wisely. The problem is... Anytime anybody wants a tax increase, all they have to do is start with the old finger in the wind method. What's the most politically popular thing government does? Roads and education. Pretty much if government ever wants anything for roads or education, it always passes because the people think that's a nice thing to do. And they don't realize that that's our money. They think it's the free money that comes down from the sky. So once we understand that money actually has to be earned first, that usually helps people. Now, going back to the libertarian question, they used to be more free market. And that was hopefully what their legacy would be. But lately... The libertarians seem to be everybody who's in favor of marijuana <laughs> being legalized. And I'm a little puzzled by its popularity because marijuana has been around for centuries, but its popularity has not been around like it is today. And now that's what most of the libertarians are known for is let's legalize marijuana I don't know how it's going to serve our society well. You combine the marijuana with the low information voters and the voters who don't want to come out to vote unless we can beg, plead, and cajole them. I just wanted to share this one little piece of information with you. There's an article that came out recently that says smoking marijuana as a teenager lowers IQ for life. And, you know, they've tried to euphemize it by instead of calling it marijuana, let's now call it cannabis, and then people won't have the same anxiety about it. But the this new research showed that the damaging effects of the drug remained even if users stopped smoking as adults. 
They said teenagers face increased risks from smoking cannabis because the brain is rapidly developing at this time. Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there. I know yeah, there's probably sufficient studies and information that other information that would support that type of view. I'm not saying that there might not be some medical benefits for it. Once again, it's one of those issues that is that all we can do is offer this type of (laughs) recreational drug. Is this the only way that we can have recreation in our society is to use mind-altering stimulants and alcohol and marijuana and drugs? Is this all that we can nobly rise to as a people? That this is so important that, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm just the, I, you know, I've never been a drug user. I'm, I thank God that I was never caught into that trap and the thinking that this was okay. I'm just a little puzzled by people who are devoted to this being a, a really an important issue that we need to promote this, that we need to promote the use of marijuana. So many times in Jefferson City, legislators made decisions about what they want to support based on how the polls show. How much support does the issue have? That will determine whether I'll vote for it or not. Right. And this is what should scare all of us, is we've lost our ability to think clearly. We've lost our ability to say what's right and wrong. If it's all about getting reelected, then we cannot feel good about our future anywhere. What made you decide to run for office if you're getting into that kind of mess? Well, it's probably one of those situations where I could think of a hundred other things that I would rather do that would be more pleasurable and more enjoyable. But at the same time, You also have to look at it and say, how can I turn my back on a situation when I have the knowledge and the understanding of the way that our nation and the nation, the founding of our nation, a beautiful plan for government and for self-governing people was laid out and took our country to heights that no nation had ever known because we had a balanced government situation that allowed to freely pursue happiness. That's not what we have anymore. We've lost that. And so we see the loss of freedom daily. They want to regulate. I mean, it's not they want. They are regulating what type of light bulbs we can use, what type of toilets you can do. They want to regulate what you can grow in your backyard garden. I mean, the list goes on and on. Now I heard that the FDA has now come out and said, we don't think cheese should be aged on wood. Not that it's ever caused anybody any problems, but for some unknown reason, now this is, quote, a health risk to people. The list goes on and on and on. And this is not what government was ever designed. Our government was designed for people to be free, to make choices, that were good choices for them and their family choices that never hurt anybody else, that didn't interfere on other people's lives. And the government was just there as an overseer to make sure this was all still a, a, an even keel, an even playing field for everybody to live their lives. And as hard as they wanted to work, this is how far they could go. That's not the American dream anymore. And that's wow. what I'd like to see. So, I'd like to see that, that dream recaptured of a people who are innovative and creative and can look at any problem that our nation faces and say, you know what? You know, we can put our heads together and we can solve this problem. We can figure out ways to make energy more efficient without closing down hundreds and hundreds and thousands of acres that have resources that would keep the cost of energy efficient for some spotted owl or some salamander or some fish in a stream. And it's not that we shouldn't respect and take good care of our environment. I'm all for that, but not at the expense of hurting everyone else in society for unreasonable regulations and rules that take things away from people and harm other people. 
So what's your advice? If you could talk to America right now and you were going to say to the people in this country and in this state, what is the path? Shine the light and show us the way. Be Joan of Arc for us for a minute. Go ahead, Cindy. Well, this is nothing like putting me on the spot here. <laughs> what is, well, you know, we're in trouble. My own passion. Okay, this is this is my own passion. Okay, I want my children and my grandchildren to be raised in freedom. Freedom is so important. And we live in a nation right now that most people don't understand that they're not free. And if there was some way that I could awaken that in people and and to cause them to have a greater understanding of what really freedom is and how our lack of freedom impacts us in ways that we don't even know or understand, just to have people just awaken to that. I don't know the answer. I know it's going to take some education. I know it's not going to be turned around overnight. But what I do know and what I am encouraged by is that there is a turning. I believe there is a turning. And uh, so I just want to have whatever part I can play, whatever small part that I could play in helping people realize that this is a, a fight worth fighting. I am old enough that I could live my life here and, and just be fine. I'm not doing this for myself other than the fact that I am totally believe in liberty and freedom. But I don't want to leave this world without knowing that I fought for my children and my grandchildren. And I hope that they would know and understand that I fought for them. And because I fought for them, they would begin to value and embrace a love of freedom and liberty. Is it freedom and liberty for liberty's sake, or is there something more there? And what happens if we can't get others to go with us? Then what? Well, No one can take my liberty in Christ away from me. I'm free spiritually. This battle is a spiritual battle, too. And I'm spiritually free. I'm spiritually free. So if America collapses, the America that we know and love and and want to have returned, if it collapses, I still go forward. I still do the same things that I'm doing now. I don't change because of that. Fight will be different. I'll live differently. There's nobody that can take my internal liberty from me. They may take my external liberties, but no one can take my internal liberty from me. That is bigger than all of it. And I have that. I have that liberty right now. Because I have that liberty, it makes me want to fight so much to make sure that other people can can understand that type of liberty and then also experience and live in that type of liberty. Well, that's a good message. And thank you for that, because what your perception is of whether it's getting lighter or darker has everything to do with who you're surrounded by. There are signs that we're getting worse. There are signs we're getting better. And it's not our duty to lie to the people and try and euphemize everything, make it sound glowing and rosy. Yeah, there's power in positive thinking, but not if it's not rooted in reality. You're absolutely right. And and I don't want anybody to think that I am a Pollyanna thinking that all is well and all is okay, because it's not. I have no need to be here and to be involved in this fight if it was all okay. It's not but it is always worth fighting for, and we don't give up. It's just as plain and simple as that. We don't give up no matter how dark it gets. When the people who really have this understanding about liberty and passion for it, the stronger we become for what we believe in. Our passion has to transfer to other people. I believe there's that little spark inside of all of Americans that we've lived in a country that very few people have ever experienced the blessings of living in a free country. Uh, That freedom has been dulled for a very, very long time. But I still believe in most people there's still something that, that they realize America has been different 
for good reasons. We want to just reignite that spark of, of, of the love of liberty. Thank you. And you give us encouragement because if it were not for good candidates being on the ballot, what hope then would we have? It's people like you who are brave enough to speak the truth and say what's going on and give us a choice when we go to vote. Thank you for that. Cindy, I know that you've got a lot of other obligations tonight, and we appreciate you giving us a few minutes out of your busy evening. Will you come on again sometime between now and the election? I'd love to, and and I want to tell you how much I appreciate you, your program, your years of sacrificial service to this cause, It's when we combine all of our passions together that we begin to make headway. And and it's just been a real pleasure to have this conversation with you tonight and look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. And everybody has something to contribute. We don't know what the outcome is going to be, but we do know we have to fight. We have to fight. We have to fight. And we have to trust God and hang on tight. So thank you, and we'll talk to you next time. I appreciate you. Okay, thank you, Cynthia. This has been another edition of Homefront on Missouri Grassroots Radio. I'm Cynthia Davis and hope you enjoyed our program. Please join us next week when we offer another infusion of truth, honesty, and solutions that will grow people bigger and shrink government smaller. Thank you for joining us. See you next week. Yeah.